Hey there. Welcome back. Art Yourself Studio, Tuesdays, 2 o'clock, live Facebook uh, watercolor lesson. To start, I'd like to just talk a little bit about this handy dandy little turn uh, turntable I have. You can use that to when you need to move your book around and you don't want to pick up your paper. I also want to mention this really nice tape. It is um, King Tiger tape. It's not real tacky, but it's it's enough to make a nice edge on your paper so that you could tape it down. And the colors we're going to use are a um, imperial purple, but any purple you have, and a phthalo blue, but any blue you have. Again, I, I don't want to get stuck on the colors. Um, I went to the opposite of the color wheel to see if I could get a nice shadow color or shading, but I believe the blue and a little bit of the gray will make a nice shading for, for our snowmen. I wanted to paint a snowman before our snow goes away. Our weather's getting warmer for this time of year. I don't know if it's going to pick up again or not, but let's just do a little bit of research. Let's look at the snowman and let me point out a few things. I want you to notice uh, uh, the scarf around the neck. I don't know. Just picture yourself making your own snowman when you were a young child. And if you're in a sunny climate, come visit us. Come to Michigan. We have lots of snow for you to come make a snowman. You could probably try to make one in the sand. I don't know. They make sand castles. Why not? Uh, in Brazil, they make beautiful people. They make fabulous sand castles that stretch uh, quite a, uh, a long way across the beach. So I wouldn't say no, you couldn't make a snowman in the sand. Um, but to start, what I'd like you to notice is um, the, the waves in the sand. They're called waves. I'm calling them waves, but the way the reason why they look like waves is because of the way the sun is reflecting. You can tell where the sun is. It's coming from this side on this particular snowman. And notice how the um, background is more than a, it's a third of the way up. It's either under half or it's or backgrounds can be above half. So this particular one is under half. So I'm going to going to keep on going and do a little more research. I want you to notice on this one, why do you know where the sun is? Because it's lighter on this side and it's darker on that side. Okay. Uh, now we're just going to start being creative. Obviously the sun is not shining on this one, but there is a lighter side and notice the different um, levels in the background and how cute are the, you could do a little family. Um, this one has the background is just a bright sunny day. Again, the lighting is coming from the left. And I think this is the same one that we used before, but notice the background, how it is the top third where, where the ground goes up and the painting is divided by the top third. So the horizon line is by the mouth of this one. Whereas, let's go back and just compare, the horizon line is well below where the mouth is on this particular one. Okay, and here's another cute one, cute mittens. Look at the background, you can see some trees, you can see some space in be the, between the trees. It is the bottom third, the shadow. Where is the light on this one? It's behind, so he's in shadow and there's a, there's a little edge of light on the side, this side of our snowman. So we know that, and this, the way the shadow comes across the snow, so we know it's behind. Here's one that I painted. Um, I included this because I wanted you to just see how you could have fun and look at the movement of these the snowman. It gives a little bit of uh, quick quick some little bit of fun. You can tell that the lighting is behind because of the way the shadow are um, showing up on this one. Uh, here is, I drew the line through the snowman to show you the angle or the curve that I wanted the, the snowman to have. Um, just, I wanted to play and I want you to play. Look at this one. You would just do a nice blue background. He's got a little bit of a curve. His head is tilted up. That's fun. Look how cute this little one is. Um, again, the background is a third uh, on the horizon, horizon line is just one third of the way up. It has some trees in the background, but does that take away from, from the snowman? I don't know. It might be nice to do a light hint of it. 
Um, look at his smile. Look how many buttons he has. Look at his scarf. It's short. Does it look like it's waving or moving? Let's see some more. Here's one that uh, definitely has a curve on him. He's big and fat. And look how he takes over the page, the composition. He's taking over the page. And um, he's on the bottom right, which is a nice, interesting composition. And here's another perspective. I, I don't think I would put the houses in, but you could. But here we are looking down, looking up at him. It makes him look super, super big. Maybe if you did little teeny houses in the background, it would look like a giant snowman. That's what you can do. That's your creativity. Just have some fun. Think outside the box. Okay, I had to do this because I was talking to my virtual assistant and he is from um, the Philippines. And he said he makes sand angels. And uh, he said he always wanted to make a snow angel. So I did this for you, Junie. I thought maybe you would enjoy this um, snowman making a snow angel. <laughs> How many of you remember laying in the sun, uh, laying in the snow and making that snow angel? I did make a, a sand angel once in Brazil because my friends were in Michigan and they were making snow angels. So I thought I'd make a sand angel. Just, just have some fun with it. I don't know if I'd want to paint that or not. I don't know. How about this? Be crazy. Think of outside the box. Make yours upside down. Um, this is a beautiful crystal one. It's a Shorsky crystal, but if you wanted to learn how to paint these crystal sections, I do have a watercolor class on painting crystal. Uh, talk to me about that. Here's another one. Here's another one, clever. It's not my painting, so I don't want to copy it, but I want you to just take inspiration from it. I can't really see who the artist is here, but how cute is that with the ornaments hanging on the arm? Just be creative. Add that to your own, but make it yours. Make it different. Uh, this is just a different type of snowman. We all know this. Well, most of us know this book. If you don't, check it out. It's, it's a very nice story, but he is not the typical shape of a snowman, the round ball and then the next ball. So think outside the box notice how they did the the um the buttons they look like coal pieces of coal which is very creative sharp edges and here's one that i made just a card you can make a card with your snowman make three or four different ones i put a sweater on her and loved the hat just had some fun that's the one that uh, i used a this was in a tray um, that I got inspired by for mine. See, the movement is what I was excited about, about this one. And cute little one, just be different. Notice how we are down lower looking up at him. And there you go. Look at that movement. And I would imagine this is a really little snowman. I don't know. How do you feel about it when you look at it? Is it little one or is it big? Or is it just where the camera is? on it that makes it look little or big also notice how it's dark on this side and the shadow is going way back here obviously the sun is on this on the left side here we go the sun is again obviously behind this is about a little over halfway but very close i would decide either go higher up and do your sun or go lower and and then have your big more sun set, set more sun in the sky excuse me this again is lighter on this side and darker on this side and when i'm saying lighter or darker are we seeing black are we seeing gray or do you see a little bit of a blue a little bit of a blue gray notice how there's just some blue and i love this look at there's pink there's pink reflected in that snow. So when you're painting your snowman, I hope you think about adding some other colors into your element. It's not, it's not black that's watered down. Definitely not. It's definitely there's grays and maybe a little purple and a little bit of blue. And uh, around the snow, uh, around, excuse me, around his nose, you can see there's a little cast of orange, a little cast from the hat and the sun reflecting on his hat and his head over here. A uh, little bit of a, a cast underneath the smile. So, um, and here's a little cast of yellow. Oops, there's a little cast of yellow underneath that, uh, underneath his scarf. So just play, think outside the box, just have some fun, and let's let's paint, let's paint 
a snowman. I'm going to go back to that first picture because I feel like it was, uh, was simple for us. And I'd love everybody to try it and be sure to post it on Art Yourself Studio. If this is the way I teach, usually I have references, we talk about it. I, I think it's really important to teach you how to see like an artist. And once you start seeing, you'll be able to uh, paint a little easier for you. We're gonna start with the snowman. If you want to draw it out, you may. Um, let's get a... Yeah, I'd like to have a contest. The first time you watch this, count how many times I say, um, because I'm really trying not to say, um, it's a bad, bad, bad habit. So, uh, we'll have a little contest who, who knows how many times I say, um, I will lightly, and I'm going to put him off to the side. Like he is in the picture. I'm just going to lightly, and notice how he is two, two balls. I'm just going to lightly suggest where, where I want him to be because I really didn't want the pencil line to show his hat can be the traditional hat or a different hat. Let's just slightly sketch it in. I think you can see that. Let me turn the light off. Too. That's a little better. It might be a little bit better. So take your water and we'll do the background first. Uh, a question, a common question I get is, do you do the backgrounds first or the foreground? And it depends on the painting. It depends on what I want to focus on. Most of the time I usually do the subject, but because this snowman is white, we're going to paint the background first. We're going to do something called negative painting. So get your paper wet, get your background going. And I, I do recommend getting all your colors wet, even though we're may not use them. You do want to have that option. I always find it's you're a little more creative when you just can play with your paints and if they're all dry, I'm just, you can see me, I'm just squirting it in with this. This is a quick, fast way. I have a little dropper that when I want to take my time, I can do that. When your colors get low, you can uh, squeeze more from the tube in there. If you're starting out with the cakes, that's perfectly fine. Use your cakes, stick them in the well, decide what colors you like. And uh, eventually you'll want to get the tubes. They're a little more expensive, but they're a nice, nice paint. I prefer, I particularly like Daniel Smith. All right, so my background is wet. I'm go I'm not going where the snowman is. I'm leaving a little space around him because I don't necessarily want him to bleed in. Let it sit for a minute, let it rest. See if you can see there's an angle on there. Look at when it's in the angle, look at how it has a shine. That's fine, it's soaking into the paper and this is watercolor paper. That's what it's meant to do is soak in and then it will take its time and just move gradually. It's like a sponge. It'll it'll take its time and just spread out. So let's have some fun with the background. He, the bottom part is going to be that uh, with the divots in it. So we want to leave some white, but I definitely see some blue. So I'm going to grab some phthalo blue, stick it here in the corner. I'm taking a milky consistency. It probably has a little more, there's a like a milky consistency. And I'm just going to put a couple waves of where that, where those um, like divots are. And then the shadow over here. And I'm doing a couple over here. And the horizon line is here. Just lightly, lightly put it in. Just have some fun with it. And wash your brush out. I remember those other colors we talked about in the other ones. Let's put some of those in there. Just have some fun. It's a little bit of fun. If you're not crazy about it, just take your brush and pull across and let it blend out. If it looks too hard and like a sore spot when you're watching, you're looking at it, then you can just pull it out. And what you'll notice is, is that the, the, um, this red and pink, pinkish red is blending with the blue and it's making a purple which I think is fine too I just have some fun with it make it yours make yours different I like to teach where you see and you learn some techniques but that you're encouraged to design your own painting even if we're doing all the same topic no two paintings are the same we all will paint it differently but it's really exciting when you do it yourself your own ideas I think you'll enjoy your painting better also look what's happened the color spread 
into the background here and uh, it's called a bloom or bleeding and what hap what why that happens is when one part the back part is drying faster than this bottom part so I got it all wet took a minute to spray all my waters came uh, spray all my paints <laughs> excuse me and um, came back and got this bottom part wet again so this was more wet than the background and it bled into there and they call them watercolor uh, bloom or blossoms and it just depends on what kind of artist you want to be if you like them keep them if you don't like them don't keep them some paintings are fabulous other paintings are not necessary so for this particular painting i'm going to try to leave that one i kind of like it all right now the background is really probably more uh, dry now so i'm going to grab some of that purple just because i want to be a little different i'm going to do it in a milky consistency. I'm just going to tap next to see how wet it is. See what's happening. I just want to see, I'm going to go next to it. I'm called, it's called negative painting. I'm really going to just outline a little bit and outline the, um, my snowman and I'll do both sides because we want it to, we want the snowman to be in front of the background. And the way to make him in front of the background is if the color carries through from both sides. So I'm putting uh, the, the purple on both sides of the snowman. I'm gonna add blue somewhere else and I've got the blue down here, but I do want the snowman to be in front of the background. So watch, I'm gonna grab some water. I want you to try this, grab some water, get it wet on this edge and then just pull it around, pull it off and move it. So exciting, just love to watch it go. I'm gonna get it wet. I'm missing, I'm trying to avoid that bloom. I might've washed it out. That's fine. I liked it while it was there. I need a little more color here because it it's losing its flavor, but I'm gonna get that wet. Tap, tap, tap with your brush and water, spread it out a little, and then just use your, lift your book up, move it around. Just have some fun with this. This is the wet on wet and have some fun with it. So right now, this is a pretty cool painting. These are pretty cool colors. This purple, the blue. So I need to warm it up a little bit to add a little bit of interest. The cool will stay back and the warm will come forward. So I see that this front part of this snowman is a little bit warmer. So remember up here, I had the purple. I wanted to go uh, on the color wheel you you would if you would like to make like a shadow or a, um, a complementary color to it, you would go on the opposite end of the color wheel. So I have this uh, purple violet. So the yellow and the yellow green is the opposite of the color wheel. So I want to take the opposite of the color wheel. I don't want to mix them because I mixed them on my palette here and they they will turn brown but I do want to warm up this part of the snowman. So I just put a little bit on my brush, just a little bit, and then I'm going to wash my brush out and then take some water and put it on it and spread that out a little bit. There you go. Spread it out just a little bit. And to make it look round, we're making this round brush stroke. And we're gonna do the same up here on his on his head. Grabbing just a little bit, tapping it in. Now, this is painting a wet brush on dry paper. So you'll find that it'll stay a little, um, it won't move as much as it did on the wet on wet. So I've got a round ball here and a round ball here. And the lesson that we did this with was, was a pear lesson. And I believe it's on YouTube under uh, Virginia Lamont Nagley or Art Yourself Studio. I believe we did the pair and we talk about how to keep one side light and the other side dark. So this is the light side. Right now it looks dark. Uh, it is the light side. I'm gonna grab some water from my brush and just put it in the snowman here, put it on this side and then grab some of that blue. I see blue, like an icy cold blue back here along this edge. And I see it up here on this edge. Tell me if you see it. Yeah. 
Okay. And the hat is going to be a black. So uh, not black. This one is brown. But when you think of a snowman, you think of a black hat. You know, I don't use black. We use three colors to mix in with black. But we'll do that at the end. Uh, here we go. I'm going to add, I need this to set a looking stripey like that. I need it to push. So I'm going to get some water and just push it out to the edge here. I want to push it and bring some of that color down. It is reflecting off of the snow up. So this part is still a little, it's not as dark as right in here. The darkest part is right here. And if you're not, if you're ever not sure and you're questioning it, just squint your eyes and take a look at it and you'll be able to see where it's really, really dark. Just by squinting, I saw it's really dark down here. They almost kind of blend in snowman and the ground. So I'm just going to put more blue there. I'll add a little more blue up here because I see that's really dark and right up under his hat. It's really dark. What's kind of neat is the, the background is still wet, so it's going to keep on blending. And I'm going to let him dry a little bit, come back. I want some more in the background, so I want some more excitement. So I'm going to put some blue in here and just swivel it through. And I'm going to take that blue because I want it to be in the background. I'm going to just pull it all the way over to this side too. And what, what's happening is I'm, I'm as the artist and I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm not like saying, Oh, I'm going to, but as I paint, I'm used to kind of painting like this. And I think, Oh, I, I want it to swivel across my page. And what, what that does is that it, that leads you, the viewer to him. And then looking at the sky and just watching how it, crosses the page it kind of takes your eye around in this dark spot kind of up and then over and through the page so it's fun it, it makes you travel a little bit makes you spend a little more time I'm, I'm sitting here waiting usually I have two paintings going at a time but uh, I'm wanting this to dry I might push some of that purple in because before we do any buttons or we do any just going to co co color in some of that um space there between just to define a little more i would like a little more purple here i want that to be just really calling attention to the the shape it's negative painting so we're just having some fun here so how are we doing on time okay um i've got to grab there's another um <laughs> i'm gonna grab the colors that i like for the a hat I use a little bit of red. I grab some sepia. Grab some green. And this is not my concoction. Actually, my mom. These are the colors my mom used. And then there's an artist that I like, Judy Morris. She has something called Judy Morris Black. And this is the, these are the colors she uses as well. So I found an old book of my mom's and she made her mixture. The difference between hers and Judy Morris is um, Judy has the sepia. And I think the sepia is is a really good color to, ha to, to mix in. So you heard it here, not mine. I'm just getting inspiration from two other artists. Okay, let's tap in, see what that does. It looks kind of gray here, but when you put it on your painting, look at how nice that is. I'm just tapping it in, tap, tap, tap. I don't want it to bleed out. Sometimes I like to have the background bleed out, but in this case, I'd like to keep the hat more solid. Now, here is that black, but I'm gonna dip in. I wanna grab a little more blue so that it has a little bit of blue in there. And when it dries, you'll see it. Okay, so it is super, super wet. This is super, super wet. If I want to put the dots in, let's see what happens. It'll bleed out. Maybe once it dries, I might go back in. And let's, I'm going to do just the dots for the face, just for the smile. Okay. I can do a smile line if you want. And for the eyes, oh, he's so cute. And you can kind of tell by the way his nose is facing where he's looking. Just have fun with it, play, if it, it, make two of them. 
make them a card send somebody a nice card i know valentine's is coming up send them a card doesn't have to be a valentine card uh orange oh orange here we go where are you orange let's grab some orange for that nose And he can have a big nose, a little nose. It's the carrot. We definitely use carrots. I love that artist, a stranger in the woods, that he uh, takes a, pic he took pictures of a deer eating a carrot off of a snowman. And I really want to recreate that. I was telling my kids over the holiday, I really want to try that. I bought a cool hat from Target. Now I'm just waiting for the timing to be right, to build that snowman and uh, to get that carrot there for the deer to eat it okay bled a little into that hat i wanted the hat to sit a little further down no problem if that happens don't worry about it you can take your corner of your paper towel i like paper towels they they work really well for me i like how absorbent they are but if you are laying down to pick up a, a larger space you might prefer toilet paper it doesn't leave a mark Sometimes I like to lay down and have the toilet, uh, the paper towel mark on there. It's up to you. Play around. See what you like. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, that hat is still very wet. There is a, a spill under his hat, but his hat, my hat on my snowman looked like it's sitting right up on top. It's like kind of loose. And the hat on the actual snowman is really further down in. I'm just going to dry that area and quicken this up a little bit mostly because we're on that 30 minute time frame but if I were I would let it dry and I would put this hat down a little further to make it on his head it's not wrong it's just what I'm observing I don't want it to bleed in if it bleeds in just take your paper towel and go over the top and then start again when it's dry just have fun now you can see that the buttons already dispersed that's because the paper was wet when I had painted the um, insides so I'm going to go ahead and take this black paint and put another dot on it and it's kind of nice it has a little bit of a background okay the eyes are still wet so we can let that dry now what's missing are his arms if you have oh no that's not salt <laughs> If you have salt handy, you might put some salt on here before it dries too much to get some movement. The salt pushes and pulls the paint. You can do that. That gives it a little excitement. If it's not doing moving enough for you, you can spray it with water. I'm now that it's starting to dry, I see that the there's not a big difference. I this is horizontal moving and the background is like blooming. So let's just get a little more horizontal here on this background and then I'm gonna like what I call zigzag I, I would would love you to just have fun just go back and forth and like make a little zigzag but we don't want to make it look like a, a a Z we don't want people to recognize some letter or something in there okay so far so good what's missing well I don't know I kind of liked this one no, here he is. This one looks like the same one, but they pay, they did it again and just put arms on him. I want arms on mine. How about you? You don't have to. You can go a smaller brush. I tend to use the same size brush uh, when I'm painting. Just if I want to go smaller, I'll just tip it up and down. And for the arms, I do want to make sure that it's wet. And the way you can tell if it's wet yeah. Does anybody remember? Type it in the box if you remember. If the bottom side, now this is taped down a little bit. If the bottom underneath the paper, if you feel it and it feels cold. If it's cold, that means it's still wet. So don't, don't mess with it. But I'm going to keep going. Wow, this is really interesting. <laughs> kind of fun. Maybe if I turned it around, if I wanted to get the top side or turn it around a little bit, you can. But doesn't that look like an angel wing? I remember we talked about making snow angels. Well, maybe this is our my snow angel, my little snow snowman snow angel. All right, I'm looking up at it, deciding where I want the arms. 
Let's see, I hope the background's not too wet. If it is, the arms will blend out. They're a little bit blendy, so you could wait. Don't rush. I'm just doing this so that you could see the finished. That's a little more what I would want. All right, so how do you how do you fix a mistake? Let's say that's a mistake. I don't really like it. I do like this a lot better. I'm just going to take the paper towel, lay it down on top. I'll get a pattern from the paper towel probably. That's okay. Look how it just picks that right up. Grab your uh, water on the brush and let's just do a little squirrely. I call them squiggles, just squiggling around. Just kind of putting some water there. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. And taking the tape paper towel and finding a new piece and picking it up and finding a new piece and picking it up. Watercolor is unforgiving, but once you play with it and start having some fun and not being too afraid of making a mistake, you'll figure out how you can correct your mistakes. And it'll be, it will be fun. It is forgiving in that sense. So there it is. If I don't want that brown to show, I will take this purple and I'll put some more in because I know it's still wet because my brown arm blend it out, put a little down here just to balance it. And let's let that dry before we put that other arm in. And I'm gonna have to let you go. Uh, it'll have two arms and maybe just a hint of a, since we like that yellow, the opposite of purple is yellow. Might be a nice contrast. I'm just gonna put a little splish, just a little brush stroke. I don't wanna get into that wet area. Maybe I'm going to push that back like it's blowing. There you go. And then I'll, I've got yellow here. I'm going to just put a little down here just to give it a little splash, just to tie it around. Maybe up there. I don't want it to look like anything like the sun. I don't, I don't really need that for this particular painting, but you can. So I hope you had fun. I could go on and on. I want to make these short and sweet so that you can make them. Don't forget to sign them. Uh, what is the rule of thumb for signing them? Anybody have any, any comments that they'd like to add, what you think, or just write it in the comments. Uh, if I don't answer you right now, uh, I will answer, I will look at them later. What do you, what's your rule of thumb about when you sign your artwork? I kind of look at it. I don't want my signature to take away from the painting. Something small in the corner. Do I do the same side as the snowman or do I want to balance it? Up to you. Do you want to do your full name or do you just want to do your initials? That's up to you. Let me know in the comments. This is still wet probably, but I'm just going to do my initials and maybe a little heart. I used to paint uh, glassware and that's how I used to sign the glassware. <laughs> okay, there we go today. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next Tuesday. This will be, this will be on uh, the Facebook page. It will go live. I won't take it off, but then we are also now putting it on to, um, there it go, another um. We're putting it on to YouTube. So you can go to YouTube, follow my channel to see all the updates. It won't get lost. I think in Facebook, it gets lost in the feeds, but yeah, follow on YouTube and you'll get all these free videos. And if you have anything you want me to paint or any ideas, let me know. Give me a, uh, write it out in the comments. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye for now.